Hello, I'm Mark and I'm a production engineer and this is Production Engineering. So what is production engineering? Well, quite simply, it is taking an artistic concept of a product into the manufacturing process and then maintaining its quality throughout its life cycle. Production engineers constantly monitor the production process and look for improvements in cost savings, efficiencies and things like that. In larger companies, production engineers generally will work with the research and development team to make sure that the ideas that the research and development team has are actually scalable. So we can actually produce it without adding some uh, unnecessary high cost to the product. Whenever you're making something, you really need to consider how many units you're going to make um, as your production run. So if you're only making 100 units, your approach to the engineering side of things will be very different to when you're making thousands, uh, tens of thousands, thousands or even millions. Now, when you have a small company or a small business, perhaps you're a single operator with an idea, you may want to engage a production engineer so that they can help you with aspects such as investigating your design and modifying it to suit mass production, help with selection of manufacturers, communication with the manufacturer as well as the production team on your behalf. They can help you understand potential problems in manufacturing and obviously they can help you find solutions to mitigate those production problems. To help you understand the full production process, let's take a look at it from the concept sketched and all the way to the first product coming off the line. First of all, we start with the artistic or drawing concept. It goes without saying that before you engage a designer, you need to have a reasonable idea of what your product will be, the market you are selling in, and the cost of the product. Armed with this information, you should be able to write a fairly decent brief for your designer. Your chosen designer should be able to produce concept drawings for you. Ideally, they will provide several ideas. Remember, you are looking for concept sketches only. The technical design is done in the next step. Revision and action. Now, this little revision and action section will happen quite a lot through the design process. It is simply a way of making sure that things are going to go right. It's simply a way to assure quality in your product. So the first revision and action. Revise the design and decide which design you are going to move forward with into production. CAD or computer-aided design. After the sketches are completed and you have selected the concept you like, it is now time to create the digital model of the product. In this process, the designer or engineer will build a virtual model that will allow you to create files required for production. These files will be used to control machines and communicate critical manufacturing information to the manufacturer. The manufacturer will be able to provide you with fairly accurate quotes and lead times. These digital assets can also be used for creating lifelike images of your product. Revision and action. Revise the 3D models and conceptual images of the actual design. Does anything need changing or updating? This loop back to the CAD section keeps going until the issues are resolved. Production files, drawings, 3D models and decoy designs. As just mentioned, the digital models are used for creating files for manufacturing. As a side note, if you are concerned about sharing information about your design during the manufacturer selection and quote process, you may want to consider a decoy design. Decoy designs are simple designs that incorporate features that would be identical to your product. They use the same materials and would require similar tooling. Be aware that certain digital files will give away everything about your design. Sharing that file ultimately allows the manufacturer to make your product. Be careful of what you are going to share with your manufacturer. Make sure that you have adequate protection in place. The digital files required for you to produce your design can be created by a designer or an engineer. Designers are usually artistic and creative and focus their attention on aesthetics and functionality. Engineers are technical and focus on functionality, manufacturability and regulations. Okay, I know what you're going to ask. Which one is better? Well, let me give you a totally biased opinion. Personally, I get designs and sketches done by a designer 
and do the production drawings and models myself, since I am a production engineer. Manufacturer selection and RFQ, or request for quotation. In the last section, I alluded to protection of your design. If you are going to use the patent method to protect your design, you will require additional drawings for the patent submission. There is a specific format that the drawing needs to be presented in, and this is something that you should consider at this stage. Before you can get a real quote, you will need to find a manufacturer. If you are able, you should consult your designer or engineer to help you with this decision. They are likely to spot red flags and help you vet the appropriate manufacturer. Remember, this is not all about price. Once you have selected your manufacturer, you can now share your real production files instead of your decoy. If you have chosen to take the decoy path, you can now get actual costs for production. I would strongly recommend that you establish real costs at this stage, especially if you have no margin for production cost blowouts. You should ask for pricing for prototypes and production samples too. They are also known as golden samples if you are manufacturing in China. Be prepared to pay for samples. The cost of those samples can usually be negotiated in your deal to be taken off the price of the final products. Revision and action. Revise the quote and determine if the cost is within your budget constraints. You may need to change the design if the budget is not met. Prototype. Depending on the complexity of your design, you may or may not need a prototype. This is straightforward. Revision and action. Close examination of your prototype might reveal or inspire changes to the design. At the very least, they confirm if the design is functional and aesthetically suitable. Product testing. If possible, you should perform a series of real life product tests. Considering the result of your product testing, does the design have to be changed in any way to correct shortcomings or add any additional features that were suggested by your product testers? RFQ production quantity. Although you may already have indicative pricing, you may discover that the initial quoted quantity might have to vary in order to be able to optimize your order. It is always best to confirm first production numbers and costs before placing the production order. Assembly procedures and quality documentation. This process can start a little bit earlier if you have a complicated product. However, the final process and procedures can only be completed when the design is finalized. The creation of your sample product or prototype will also yield good information that you can use to create your quality inspection documentation. First article. Ideally, the first item or batch of items from the production line should be inspected. For large projects, this really needs to be done to prevent disasters, which could break up a manufacturer relationship. Revision and action. Hopefully, this revision and action process will not yield any problems. However, it is your last chance to make change decisions before you make your first full production run. First production run. This is self-explanatory. This is it. The machines are running and your products are getting made. Quality inspection. Quality inspections can happen during production as well as at the end of production prior to shipping. It is not uncommon to have several during the production process. Things can go wrong and often do. Be prepared to solve problems quickly and be willing to compromise. Sometimes this is essential. Public release. At this stage, you would have concluded your dealings with your manufacturer. You are now sending your items to your marketplace. Brace yourself for customer feedback. Revision and action. Hopefully your product is a success and you have very little negative feedback. Negative feedback or even positive criticism is a good thing. It gives you the opportunity to improve your product in the next run. Hopefully the changes you need to implement are not too difficult or costly. Following production run. This production run should be a lot easier to complete. Your manufacturer will now start to be more comfortable with making your product. They will now be more open to real negotiations on price and quality. They will certainly have a better understanding of what your product costs them to make. Quality inspection. Regardless of how many product runs you complete, if the quality is important to you, you need to inspect every production run. Things will go wrong. Expect it and prepare for it. Public release. As you release the next batch of goods, more feedback will come 
and more decisions will need to be made. You are now in the production loop. You will constantly review and change things going forward. You are a moving target and this is a good thing. Well, I hope you found this useful and if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Look out for more videos like this coming up and my name is Mark and this has been Production Engineering. Take care. Bye.